Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Virgin Galactic will do its own flight testing of the new Spaceship 2. Private Enterprise Race to the Moon heats up. And new inductees are chosen for the CAF Hall of Fame. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Since its inception, Virgin Galactic has worked with Scale Composites to build and test the spacecraft Virgin hopes will eventually carry paying passengers on suborbital space flights. But when the newest version of Spaceship 2 is complete, Virgin Galactic says it will be doing the flight testing on its own. The company has hired Skill Composites pilot Mark Stuckey to join the team that will conduct future test flights. Stuckey has already flown Spaceship 2 20 times in his career. Stuckey will join Virgin Galactic's commercial flight team responsible for flying White Knight 2 and Spaceship 2. And while it does represent a shift in the organizational structure of the program, Virgin Galactic CEO George Whitesides said that Scaled Composites will still be involved in some way for years to come. XPRIZE has announced that five Google Lunar XPRIZE teams have been awarded a combined $5.25 million in recognition of key technological advancements towards their quest to fund a private spacecraft on the surface of the moon. Determined by a judging panel of science, aeronautics, and space industry experts that evaluated numerous tests over the past year, the milestone prizes honor hardware and software innovations needed to overcome technical risk in the three crucial areas of imaging, mobility, and landing systems. For each milestone prize categories, teams carried out a number of hardware tests representative of their planned lunar missions, while sharing extensive design information and analysis with the judging panel. Competing for the milestone prizes is an optional part of the Google Lunar X Prize. Teams that choose not to participate in the milestone prizes are still eligible to win the grand or second place prizes. After the break, the commemorative Air Force names Hall of Fame inductees. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. For over 50 years, the commemorative Air Force has grown through the efforts of tens of thousands of members. A few of those members have made monumental contributions towards the success and worldwide impact that the CAF enjoys to this day. The CAF Hall of Fame was established to honor those members. The general staff has chosen the following individuals for the Class of 2015 CAF Hall of Fame. Colonel Donald H. Woodham, Colonel Stephen W. Barber, and Colonel Wallace Dillard. The Hall of Fame ceremony and banquet will be held on February 21st in the George H.W. and Barbara Bush Commemorative Center on the CAF campus. A full CAF Hall of Fame exhibit is planned for the future and will house the plaques for each inductee and display their memorabilia. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN's CEO and Editor-in-Chief, Jim Campbell, to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim says that technology is one thing, but building better aero communities may be just as important. Here's this week's barnstorming. Time and time again, we look at the technologies, the amazing things that we think are going to make aviation grow. 
We need better airframes, better engines, better avionics. But maybe, just maybe, the key is we need a better community. Over the last couple of days, we've been in Champaign, Illinois, at an event called eFest. We were there a couple of years back and came back this year. It's part of our outreach effort with Airborne Partner, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, where we've been having a great time and interviewing a lot of people and talking to hundreds of folks who are here. And there's been this one common, interesting facet of everybody we've talked to. It's a sense of a unified community. In the interviews we've done, everybody's emphasized all the things that people can do to get involved, to be a part of the community, to be good neighbors with their UAVs, with their multi-rotors, with their aircraft, with their rotorcraft, what have you. They talk about supporting the local hobby shops. They talk about supporting AMA. They talk about supporting each other. There's something to be said here for a community that understands that its future is based in working together, helping each other, and all, in the long run, just having an enjoyable time working together. Out here, we're seeing families, mothers, daughters, fathers, sons, all flying together, having a great time, and at the same time, looking out for each other. There's no questions that there are some lessons that could be learned by the full-scale community. And sometimes, maybe you just gotta take a look at the entry level to everything, in this case, model aviation, to realize that some people get it right, and it's up to us to mimic that, learn from it, and replicate it so that we can build better communities throughout the rest of aviation. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, small UAV technology can prevent improper use. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. AML's patent pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Pad. UAV maker DJI is releasing a mandatory software update that will disable their drones if within a 15-mile radius of the White House and within close proximity to more than 10,000 airports. EASA has granted an STC to MT propeller for its next-generation five-blade scimitar composite propeller on the Beach A36s powered by Rolls-Royce 250 turboshaft engine. Improved performance and lower noise is expected. SpaceX leader Elon Musk is to be the keynote speaker at the Space Station Research and Development Conference in Boston on July 7th through the 9th. It's said that Musk was chosen because his name is synonymous with the future of innovation. Imagine a small UAV that won't bother anyone Ever. It's proposed to have a small helicopter attached to the next Mars rover that can be used as a forward scout. A proof of concept design is being tested. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. If you're looking for a newly manufactured two place airplane suitable for the private owner or for a flight school, it seems like you have to aim towards the light sport aircraft. However, Discovery Innovation shows us that there's another way to go with the FAR Part 23 certified Discovery XL2. Discovery says their XL2 single-engine two-place aircraft is economical to fly and easy to maintain. Its fuselage is formed from carbon fiber with a welded steel chassis. They claim the Discovery XL2 is an airplane that works hard. 
It's economical to operate and maintain and offers low operating cost. The Discovery XL2 is powered by a Continental IOF 240B with FADAC, producing 125 horsepower, and the cruise speed is claimed to be 125 knots. Standard avionics includes a Garmin G500 dual-screen electronic flight display with a complete suite accompanying avionics, including an autopilot. Well, that's our program for Friday, January 30th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Join us every weekday along with a growing number of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.